Hello. Hello. Good evening. How is everybody doing? Let us know if you can hear and see us. Make sure everything is working right. Sure. I don't know. I don't trust technology anymore. <laughs> we'll give it a second here. All right. Oh, hey, Chris and Brandon, you are loud and clear. Cool. See? Thank you. Look at that. <laughs> Yay. It technology worked. worked. Well, it has in the past few weeks, so. <laughs> yeah. This time it worked. Yeah. For some reason, it, it was happy. And this is dual streaming, right, to Facebook and YouTube? Mm hmm Sweet. So um, this is Whiskey Tango Talk. My name is Kristen. This is my husband, Brandon, from Whiskey Tango Farms in central Wisconsin. Um, we do this talk every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central. It's just a live Q&A. Um, we talk about quail, rabbits, gardening, self-sufficiency. Um, there's random squirrel moments on my part mostly. So, um, but we just kind of hang out and um, feel free to tell us where you're from in the comments. We'll do a shout out. Um, and then you can ask us questions if you have anything or give us updates on what you're doing, you know, gardening or with rabbits or quail or whatever animals you may have. Um, but we're here every week. So um, just make sure that you keep it positive and clean in the comments, please. We greatly appreciate that. Um, Ed and Verna are our moderators and they'll kind of watch the um, comments for us as well in case anybody sneaks in um, and says something naughty that they shouldn't. Um, but we um, have a mostly a quail farm. We have lots of other animals too, but we do ship hatching eggs for Caternix Quail nationwide. Our um, website is whiskeytinglefarms.net. Um, so you can check out everything that we have online there. We mostly um, specialize in feather sexable quail, but we do have some celadons as well. So check those out. Um, we will be doing a quail con with my Shire on Labor Day weekend in um, September. And that'll be at my Shire farm in Miamisburg, Ohio. Uh, it's going to be a two-day event, so check my Shire's website for tickets. It'll be lots of fun. It was loads of fun last year. It was only one day, so this year we actually made it two days so that we could kind of talk to people and enjoy co people's company. But we'll have speakers and tables and lots of learning and talking and tours and animals and all that good stuff. So check it out. Um, we are going to start production or start making the quail daddies and quail mamas calendar. So be watching out for that once they go on sale. Um, I'll be emailing all of the, the models, all the mamas and daddies, um, what needs to like, what kind of things like the theme is and everything, like what we need from those. Um, and then hopefully those will be on sale in the next couple months here. So we'll keep you updated. Um, there's a couple groups we recommend for starting with quail specifically. Um, there's newbie quail lovers, so check that one out. Um, and there's a bunch of them and they're all linked. So once you find one, it's pretty easy to find others. Um, but the newbie quail lovers is very helpful for getting started in quail. There's also quail for profit if you're wondering um, like how you can make money with quail or um, at least, you know, break even and pay your feed bill. Uh, so check that out. We also have a group called Self-Sufficient Backyard. Um, and that one is a little bit more broad where you talk about like the quail, but also rabbits gardening and all things self-sufficiency. So check that out as well. Please make sure you hit like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you get notifications of all of our upcoming videos. Um, it Hopefully it looks like people are mostly liking our um greenhouse video so that was super exciting and really hard to like not spill the beans on so that was super exciting but we have some super fun videos coming up um this next week as well so make sure you check those out make sure you're subscribed um i think that's everything is that everything yeah so okay you can get into the comments i'll let you read Are you going to... Oh, you want me to go to comments? Yeah, and do the, the yep. thingy thing. The thingy thing? Thingy thing. Don't forget to hit the like button. Yes, and subscribe if you're not already. Um, got the comments here. SL Swanson was on here. I don't have that in my software right now. Um, says, I will be on the road and may not be here, though nothing will stop me from providing my likes and favorite. <laughs> self-sufficient couple and their fans well thank you thank you 
Uh, Joy is here, says hello all from Western Oregon. Thanks hello. for joining us. Thanks for joining. Verna's here, says hello everybody. Hey, hey. Mine. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't even know it was there. Anyways, uh, Papa. Jesse Mills is here. Says hi. Um, Lisa's on Facebook. Says hi, guys. Hello. Hey, girl. Hey. Thanks for joining. Jennifer Myers says, good evening all. Good evening. Thank hello, you for joining. Hello. Verna says her fig tree's growing like a weed. <laughs> That's good. That's exciting. That's exciting. Oh, Lee's Quails is here. Says hello, everybody. Hello. Woman of Spirit says, happy Wednesday, beautiful quail people. Hello, thanks for joining. Ed Got Bates says, love the hat, Kristen. Brandon <laughs> did a nice job. He did. I love my hat. I really do. For those of you that, I don't know if you can see, it has our, our farm logo on it. So, and it's in my favorite color. And it's like a crisscross hat in the back. So, whether I have a ponytail or a messy bun or wherever I have it on my head, I can I can wear my hat because <laughs> sometimes I have barn hair. Pine Haven Acres is here. This is good evening. Hello, <laughs> Excuse hello. me. Gary Miller's here. Says hello, Whiskey Tingle Farms, Verna, Ed Guppy, and to all the rest of the Quail family and friends from North Carolina. Hi there. Oh, I forgot to say too, we had. Well, we didn't have babies. Well, we had babies, but they're not babies anymore. Um, our um, silver fox, one of our silver fox does had five babies and one is a chocolate, which is super exciting. Um, one of the blacks is kind of small. It's like half the size of the other four. So I'm not sure if it's going to make it. I checked this afternoon because we were doing some stuff outside and it was still alive. So We'll see. I'm, I'm, I hope it makes it, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. So, but we're super excited that Elsa had a successful litter and apparently Galaxy is a chocolate carrier because that's the only way that we got a chocolate. So that is a cool surprise. Sorry. <laughs> I was excited. Fine. Uh, Josh Punk Rock Gardens here says, hey, from upstate New York, I hope everyone's Wednesday has been good. Been busy. Busy. and. <laughs> Thanks for joining. I'm like there you go. Verna says, "I think I will be making some quail fertilizer, or is that fertilizer for?" I hope you're not making quail soup. fertilizer soup. That sounds interesting. Unless you mean, I know that some people use um like make compost tea for their garden. Is that what you mean? Maybe. Maybe. That would be like just don't drink it. <laughs> That'd be pretty gross. <laughs> Linda's here says hi all from Northeast Texas. We are all set up and ready to meet everyone at QuailCon. Yay! Awesome. You're gonna have so much fun. It's amazing. Dale's here says good evening everybody. It's here. It's finally here. What's here? What's here? I don't know. Us? I'm, I'm curious. not sure. Hmm. Hmm. Speaking of QuailCon, if you want to make donations to QuailCon, you can do a super chatter sticker down at the bottom. Yes. Those will be going to QuailCon. Yeah. And we So when we were um, making the ticket prices for QuailCon, we wanted to make sure it was affordable so that anybody could come and money was not a factor. So um, basically anything that is planned and scheduled right now, that's what the tickets are paying for. Um, and any extra donations will either go towards like more events or more fun things to do there um, or go in the bucket for next year. Um, so, but hopefully um, you can make it because it's, we, it is very affordable in my opinion. Um, and we made sure of that. So, yeah. 
Pine Haven Acre says, yes, the hat is super cute. Thanks. Uh, she also says, congrats on the litter. Thank you. Jasmine Bass, or no, I'm sorry, I just looked at the icon. <laughs> Time and Timber Homestead, which Jasmine says, hello, friends, tuning in from Southwest Missouri. Hello. Um, Chickadee Farm says, hey, all. Hello. I like that spelling. That's funny. From the side, I thought it said something about like Chick fil A, but like spelled different. And I was like, that'd be a cool farm name, too, but you might get in trouble, I guess. But Chickadee is cute. I remember. Um, when I used to wait for the bus in the morning, I would always, the chickadees are always like up in the trees, like chickadee dee 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 dee. So I like chickadees. So, anywho. Uh, Jasmine says, hash me some WTF floopers today. Awesome. <laughs> They're so cute. It's little fluffy raisins running around in the incubator. I'm curious what you got. Never gets old. Yeah, she got some mystery eggs. She got a whole mixed box. So I'm curious what you got too. <laughs> Some fun stuff, surely. Verna says, yep, <laughs> compost tea, LOL. I call it soup as you put poop on the bottom of a five-gallon bucket and fill it with water. Okay, that yep. makes a little more sense. Thank you for clarifying because I was like, I love you, Verna, but that's a little weird. Even it from, makes like, sense. It's soup. I just, yeah, it, poop it, soup. It, it does poop soup. I like that. That makes sense. Dale says, soil is warm with to work. Whoop, whoop. That's Shush. awesome. Maybe down by you. <laughs> We're getting there. Yeah. Today it got up to Couple like weeks, I'm 50. Guessing. It was like 47 today and the sun was out. It was it was kind of nice. I think that's why I'm like really pooped and I have a headache because I don't think I drink enough today. But like I was busting my butt. We were running all around today doing things and trying to get ready. So yeah, still a lot to do. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, the warm weather. I think spring is maybe finally here. Although it did snow yesterday morning. So that's a thing. Josh wants to know if Verna uses fresh pooper aged. She says fresh. He says it's good to know. I got bases. LOL, I didn't know that was you, Jasmine. <laughs> I only knew because, I mean, I, I knew the name, but the picture. I also, the picture, like I just seen the picture and that was what I went off of. Was the I mean, it literally could have been somebody else that just stole her YouTube picture. And I hope not. I'll fight somebody if they try to impersonate Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one Jasmine. <laughs> um, Gary Miller says, congrats on the new babies. I got 91 quail babies hatched now. Um, won't know total until the morning. That's awesome. a lot of fluffy raisins. Congrats. Chickadee Farm says, I sold out completely on eggs and live birds for the whole summer. That's awesome. That's awesome. Congrats. Good job. Jasmine says, Baha, I forgot I was logged in as TNT. It's dynamite. Chickadee Farm says, Craigslist, Craigslist was a hit. Awesome. Linda says, I learn something new every time. Warm soup, yummy, lol. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Dale says, compost tea hack. Use a cheap pillowcase and put the solids in it and put that in the bucket of water. That's a good idea. That works. Dale says it's snowing now <gasps> down there. Crazy. Keep that down there. I don't want any more of it. Right. I was really upset yesterday when I woke up because he turned the news on and like I woke up to the word snow and I was like, you've got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> I, was, I was like instantly in a really bad mood. I generally am when I wake up. I'm not much of a morning person when, until I have caffeine, but that that was definitely a mood killer. <laughs> Josh says, I suspected it was Jasmine because of the picture is Jasmine. Yes. See? Verna says, yes. Only one Jasmine, and she is a gem. She is. Um, Woman of Spirits says, we had a frost last night here in southern in Indiana. Had to go out and cover up the Cherokee waxing beans, potatoes, and starter plants that I am f 
hardening, forwarding, hardening, hardening, hardening off. off. Yeah. Autocorrect, I'm sure. Yeah, we. Yeah, I don't remember. Sorry. It happens sometimes. <laughs> it's kind of like squirrel syndrome, but it's like gone. <laughs> Ed says the picture is so small on my iPad, I can't see who, see who it was. LOL. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, like if you don't recognize it, but for sure. Jasmine says, LOL. Oh, yep, it's me. Yup. <laughs> Woman Spirit says, I'm hardening off. I, didn't, I don't care what anyone says, AI is not too smart. Yeah, it has its moments. Yeah. Like, technology is great when it works, but it doesn't always work. I think, yeah, it was this, I don't, because there was a class, I was taking a class, and I know my Google, like, turned on, and it was, like, during a Zoom call, and I was super embarrassed, but I think it happened during a live, like, last week or the week before, too, didn't a Google in here start, like, jabbing away, jabbering? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, nobody asked you, <laughs> but usually it's okay. Maddie's Backyard says, my quail hens have just gone into their molt. How long does it take to run its course? Thanks. Uh, I guess I've never like written it down on a calendar to find out. Probably a few weeks before their feathers start coming in. They'll be okay. They might be a little like moody and they may not lay. Um, so just be prepared for that. Say so Maddie's Backyard, um, Matt has been making lots of YouTube videos on quail and quail cages and That's stuff. That's awesome. Good for you. I've watched a couple of them. Awesome. Ed wants to know, so is that going to be your YouTube channel, Jasmine? Ed got bait says, been in the high 80s here for the last four days. Yuck. That sounds good. so good. I'm chilled to the bone still. Uh, Jasmine wants to know how how's that uh, greenhouse treating y'all? I just planted out a good amount of veggies today, including my tomatoes and melons. Yay! It's doing well. It's we're staying getting, warm. Yeah, we're getting to learn it a little better. We put a heater in there, um, and then we yeah we had a couple nights that dipped down into low twenties. So I'm like, I know the plants aren't going to survive that on their own yeah so we we threw a heater in there and it kept it i think at night in the 40s or something according to the goby thingy yeah so and we did make some modifications too to kind of help hold the heat in and control the wind and all that as well so that kind of helps but yeah i really like having a greenhouse and having my kitchen back because it was starting to look like a jungle <laughs> Josh wants to know, how, I wonder how well that poop soup would work in the green stock. Could I just dump it in the reservoir? I may need to find out. I think mm -hmm. you'd be able to. I would think so because you're not, you're, it'd be the soup that's going down to the rest of the plants. I would be, I mean, I wouldn't really want to like clean it up though. Ugh. But I guess if you do the pillowcase thing, like Dale said, like, like a, yeah, the compost tea pill case bag. Yeah, you don't have any solids. Yeah, that wouldn't be that big of a deal. But yeah, I bet that would work really well. And since it's, since the green stock like um, does a good job dispersing everything, it's not like the top plants will get all the fertilizer and the rest won't. So that would be good. I want a green stock so bad. I'm like waiting. I'm like hoping that they have a Mother's Day sale. So. It's always like their biggest sale of the year. Not that I've been researching or anything. Josh says, I'm jealous, Jasmine. I can't plant, to plant tomatoes and melons until at least Memorial Day. It's about the same for us. Yeah. Our last frost date here, I think, is May 12th. Um, and it sucks because, like, I see all these, like, videos on YouTube of everybody, like, planting and going, like, like heavy duty in their gardens. I'm like... Uh, I feel like we're so behind, but I have to remember, like, I have to do what's best for our zone, you know? Ed says, just remember, quail poop is hot like rabbit poop. Or not like rabbit poop, um, but like Verna said here. But in the poop soup, or soup, poop, soup. In the soup, Ed. Ed. 
it cools off. Yes. Verna says technology is only as good as the operator. <laughs> I always blame it. It's only as good as the programmer. So. <laughs> Dale says, Josh, we are currently testing large scale hydroponics with just compost tea for nutrients. One cup full flavor tea per gallon of water, cracky and NFT. And what's NFT? I forgot what it's stood for. I'm sure Dale will add and tell you. Don't yeah. Know. Ed says, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, awesome. please. I would like to see if we could get 40 likes or so on this video. That'd be cool. I don't know if we would be able to, but we'll see. Gotta start somewhere, right? <laughs> Verna says, mine lay when they molt. If they have the right amount of protein, they will be fine. Yeah, I haven't had any issues with ours when they're molting. At least my hutch is outside. I don't pay attention to your birds in the quail barn. <laughs> so that's your job. Josh Punk Rock Garden says, Dale, that sounds really cool. I like to grow my lettuce using cracky. Verna says, it's 50s. Today, Jasmine says, bummer, Josh. I actually waited an extra two weeks past our usually last frost date, and I'm glad I did. We got a frost um, two nights right after. Yikes. For two nights right after. Crazy. That would make me so mad. Oh, yeah. I have lots of extra sheets, like, just in case. Because I'm I like... i say last, last year we ended up um, covering a lot of plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're going to have a bigger garden this year because we have more, or we at least started more plants ahead of time. So, like, yeah, there was a sheet set that I was going to, like, toss, and I was like, mm, I'm going to keep that because that would be good for the garden. Verna says, Jasmine, usually can't plant here until my birthday or Mother's Day. Yeah, usually... I like to play dangerously, and I'll usually plant right around Mother's Day, even though our average last frost date is, like, the third week in May, usually, so. Yeah, this year Mother's Day is the 8th, and our last frost date is the 12th, but I think we're going to wait a few days after that. Um, yeah. Uh, Jasmine said, yes, Ed, Baby Steps, LOL, and reply if that's her YouTube channel name. Everybody should go over to her YouTube channel and subscribe. Yes. Josh says, that's why I wait until Memorial Day, sometimes not until early June. What zone are you in, Josh? I'm curious. Being upstate New York, I think that you're probably similar I to us. I think it's pretty similar to us. Because we're 4A. I think we're 4B, technically. 4B. Technically, there's, we're on a thin line of 4A and B. Yeah. So, whatever you want to call I it. I have bad luck, so I'm going to call it 4A. <laughs> Dale says, our last fr frost date is Mother's Day. I accept the challenge every year and plant a month early. <laughs> Charles says, hello from Tampa. Hello. hello. That's for, nice and toasty down there. Thanks for joining Linda says, wait, what is a green stock? And oh. then Verna posted a link for the green stock. Yeah, so it is a, um, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I have a headache, uh, like a tiered planter, but the water system is set up so that, because like a lot of stacking planters, your top plants will get all the water and then the middle, or they'll get too much usually, and then the middle ones are like, eh, and then the bottom ones don't get enough usually. The green stock has a special watering system to make sure that everything gets equal watering. Um, and they make different models now. There's um, the leaf, and then I think the other one is just called the original, and they're just different depth pockets. And you can mix and match them, and they come in different colors, but they're really, really good for vertical gardening and having like a small footprint um, for your garden, which is really great if you're limited on space. So. You know, that's a nutrient film technique. I'm sorry I asked. I'm sure Braden will tell me later. I got Bates said 21 thumbs up so far. 
That's a lot of thumbs. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, no, we got 22. Yay. Halfway there. More than halfway there. Linda says she's seen those. Those are neat. Yes. Yeah, there's a couple different, like, brands out there, but that's the one that um, I've been most interested in when researching. Like Gary says, I'm picking strawberries now. So good. What? So jealous. That must be where the strawberry plants come from that are in the stores I've seen because we've had strawberry plants for sale and they've had full like strawberries on them already. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Mine are still in the fridge. My little starts. Josh says his, he thinks his new place is 5A. So pretty similar. Gary says nice to live in a warm climate. Yeah, I bet. Oh, Garden Tower. That's the other brand that I've looked at. I think they're a little more expensive, but. Can you read it? Huh? What? No, I'm sorry. I want a Garden Tower 2.0. It's like a green stock setup with the addition of vermicompost bin built in. Charles is in the 80s every day, cold at night in the 70s. Cold? Are you calling the 70s cold? Oh my goodness. Oh, that sounds amazing though. I know that once you like live in an area though, you do get like used to it. Like if we lived there, you know, yeah, I get it. Jasmine says, Gary, yum. Um, I am harvesting lots of asparagus right now and chives and such. My strawberries are flowering like crazy. Wow, you already have asparagus? Yeah. We won't have asparagus for oh. about another month. Oh my goodness gracious. All that spare grass. I love me some spare grass. <laughs> Josh wanted to know if uh, Jasmine, the garden towers turn. I remember the original one didn't. Verna says we got 28 likes. There we go, 12 awesome. more. <laughs> I think I can, I think I can. Chuck is here, says good evening, everybody. Hey, hey. I've been sending Brandon lots of pictures of chinchillas. So I blame you, Chuck. <laughs> Linda says, yes, you get very used to it. I cringe at the thought of snow. Our asparagus is popping up. That's awesome. Jasmine says, yes, it's on a nice roller tray and it turns. Ooh, cool. Awesome. Frank is in the house, says, hi, everybody. He, Hello, he's neighbor. Napping. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Gary says he's been getting asparagus for at least two weeks now. That's oh, my goodness. Crazy. I loved asparagus just like fried up in the pan with some butter or like on the grill too. Garlic. And garlic. Mm, my mouth is watering. It's, I love asparagus a lot. PJ's Family Farms here says hello, y'all. Hey, hey. Hello. Josh said, oh, nice. That was the one thing that turned me off from the first design was them not being able to spin. That's cool. Verna says, I need to get that tower. If it turns, it is what I need. Yeah, the green stock comes with a couple different bases, too. I'm a little bit more well-versed in that than the garden tower, just because, like I said, that's what I've been researching a lot. Um, but, yeah, there's different bases that you can get, so. Jasmine says, my asparagus isn't making it into the house because I keep munching on it while <laughs> tending to the garden beds, LOL. That's hilarious. That's funny. Chuck wants to know, how do you get wild asparagus started? Um, well, I mean, so we have, we bought some starts um, from John's, like from the Bear Root Room. Um, but when it gets really warm and it starts to the bloom, it'll go to seed. Um, we bought rhizomes from John's. I, I planted seeds last year and it takes from seed three to four years to actually get asparagus. But 
um, like in the wild at least, once it um, goes to, like it'll bolt and then go to seed and then the wind blows and it like flies away and it reproduces that way. Um, so, but I imagine, yeah, you could dig up some roots or when it's, when it goes to seed, like grab some of those seeds and you can plant it, but it does take a while to get established. I would just take the plant up and bring it home. If you have permission. <laughs> if it's in the ditch, then it's free. As long as nobody sees you, right? No. Well, if it's in the ditch, it's owned by the, the county or whatever. I pay my taxes, man. So, there you go. <laughs> PJ's Family Farm says my green stock has strawberries mm. planted in it and watermelon radishes. Fun. I saw those watermelon, or I can't remember if they were watermelon radishes. I thought they were called like strawberry radishes or something. I saw those and <clears throat> they looked really pretty. Um, yeah, I got some, um, it's called like Easter basket mix radishes from Baker Creek. So I'm anxious to get those planted. So um, the only, I don't have a green stock right now. Hint, hint. For no, Mother's you're not going to get one. Um, I have just like a vertical planter or a stacking planter. Um, then I'm going to put my strawberries in. So we'll see how that goes. But I decided to settle. You've spent enough on plants this year. No, I'm growing our food. There's a difference. And I plan, I intend to harvest a lot of my seeds to save for next year. Which I'm reading on how to do and stuff. Josh says, Jasmine, that's me with the dragon tongue beans. Linda says, we eat them as we pick, <laughs> them, pick them. None have made it into the kitchen yet. Ed says, WTF, maybe you should get some indoor, outdoor grass turf stuff will help with the wind in your greenhouse to make it more like it was on the grass. <laughs> I mean, we have, we have plenty of area to put the greenhouse. I just, I don't know. I didn't want to put it out anywhere. Well, and our ground is very uneven. Yeah, we used to have lots of trees on our property, and then somebody cut them, and then they never like filled in the holes. So it's like, whoop, whoop. so there's holes everywhere. I've been slowly working on filling them. Gary says, I eat asparagus raw in any other way. Linda says, dragon tongue beans. I really need to have a scratch pad handy. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of those. They sound interesting though. Tickle Trunks here says, hey, green, that greenhouse is so cute. Hero, sorry I'm late, loves. I just got back from Aaron starting that pre surgery plan today and feeling like utter poopy. Jasmine says, LOL, I will never be self-sufficient as far as the garden goes. I always have the munchies in the garden, LOL, working hard to create a good appetite. Yes. Well, you just need to plant more then. Because then if you don't, if you get full, you'll end up having to bring it in. <laughs> right? Maybe she's just working that hard. I mean, She'll I just guess. work harder then and then eat more. I don't know. <laughs> Ed says, you can eat my share, Gary. <laughs> Verna says, I love asparagus, but can't afford it here. Can't afford it or find it. Let's see, maybe it's, it, I mean, it makes sense if oh. it's more expensive in other areas. Yeah. I mean, they sell it pretty cheap in the store. But that's because it literally grows in the ditch here. So, no, I mean, the stuff that, I mean, the stuff that's in the store now is imported. Oh. But it's like, it's still it's cheap. I think it was only like a buck fifty or something like the last time we bought it. Oh. Um, Josh says, I've thought about doing my strawberries in rain gutters along the fence. My only concern is they'd survive the winter up off the ground. If they'd survive. Yeah. Yeah. If they, yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like you would probably have to figure something out. Like, obviously, you put, like, straw or some type of insulator on top in the winter. But I don't know about, like, the bottom, like, keeping the soil, like, warm. I guess you could maybe take them down, like, if depending on how you had them attached, take them down off that and put them on the ground or in like, like on a straw bale or something maybe. Uh, PJ says, Josh, make it so you can lower them in the winter and cover with straw. <laughs> hey, great minds think alike. <laughs> Josh also, also said, um, dragon tongue beans are cool. Oh. They're yellow or pale green with purple stripes. When you cook them, the stripes go away, but they are great raw in the garden. That sounds really cool. I'll have to check those out. Dragon tongue beans. Neat. Ed says, so what other cool stuff have you made with your laser? Just this. <laughs> you made a sign for the swap that was super cool that people got a good chuckle out of. Josh says, that's a good idea. I'll try that. There you go. Brenna says, it's too expensive here. $6.18 for a two pound Holy bunch, mackerel. too expensive. Yeah, that is crazy. That is a lot. Wow. Linda says, okay, silly question. I'm new at gardening on a large scale. You don't have to replant strawberries every year. No. Mm -mm. They get like little um, runners. So they kind of like reproduce They'll, themselves. Yeah, I mean the plant itself will not die as long as it doesn't get too cold. And then it, produce um, shoots, which will plant itself basically, and you'll have more strawberry plants. Yeah, and some you'll have to check, um, cause different like varieties, some like you won't even pick the first year actually, or you shouldn't. Cause then I think that gives them a good chance to get their root system established so that they can like produce those runners and stuff. Um, so you'll have to check to see like which variety would be best for you. But yeah. Linda says, that's good to know. Strawberries are on the list. Verna says, strawberries is like mint. The runners can take over the garden, other gardens. Yes, they can. Mm -hmm. Josh says, alpine strawberries don't put out runners, but the clump will expand every few years. You can break them up and spread them out more. There you go. Yeah, and those, those would be good in like a green stock because they wouldn't you know, they kind of stay where they are. There, I mean, there's a, I guess you could put anything in like a vertical planter. It really doesn't matter because if you, it produces a runner, you could just clip that and then plant it. It's really not that big of a deal, but yeah. My, I wish I knew more about strawberries, actually. That's actually the main, um, uh, what did I say? Like, or one of the like farm endeavors that my grandparents had, they actually had a farm called Strawberry Acres. <laughs> So, um, but I wasn't around obviously during the time that they were like in the prime of that. So, because I'm the youngest grandchild of, I don't know how many, they had five daughters. So there's, I think 11 grandchildren. So, and we very pretty widely in range. So my grandma was very elderly by the time I like remember much. So she did some gardening and stuff, but like, obviously they weren't running the farm anymore at that point. So. But a lot of people didn't know, um, like, if somebody from the Watoma area where I grew up didn't know, who, like, who my parents were, I'd be like, oh, and I'd tell them who my grandparents were, and then about Strawberry Acres, they're like, oh, so they may not, like, have known me, but they, like, knew my grandparents, and they knew my grandparents' farm, so that's kind of fun, but, yeah, I wish I knew a little bit more about them, but. Ed wants to know, what are you going to plant next? Oh, we have so much to plant. There's so much. What to don't plant. we have to plant? I got to get the corn potatoes, planted, potatoes, onions. carrots, onions. I We bought blueberry plants. Those have to get in the ground. Raspberry, Raspberry plants. Those have to get in the ground. Rhubarb. She bought rhubarb for some reason. Just one. I only bought one. But... Um, yeah. Radishes, but. kale. I have my lettuce started. Um, broccoli. Tons of peppers. Lots of peppers. So many peppers. 
tomatoes, tomatoes, squash, um, watermelon, loofahs, lots of loofahs. Um, and then on my, I'm going to be doing some trellis gardening. Um, I got some like peas and like runner beans um, cucumbers, zucchinis. I'm also going to try like a three sisters thing with my, um, ornamental corn and some squash and pumpkins and things like that. Um, a couple flowers and we're going to have kind of like a wildflower garden area because if it's flowers, I don't have to mow it. So, ha. Huh. What? <laughs> um, I know we're missing stuff. We bought a lot of seeds this year. I bought a lot of seeds this year. He's like, I didn't buy much of anything. It was mostly me. Linda says, we have raised beds and everything is separated this year because the test run will, with everything really, we have we are waiting for September to get quail. It's hard to wait. Yes. That's a good time to get them There's though. no reason to wait. Why is the reason to wait? Curious. Uh, PJ says, I planted strawberries a few years ago. Seemed like we could never get any from them. We would leave them to ripen and they would disappear. Come to find out they are white strawberries. Oh. Interesting. I have heard of those. Patricia says, hi, I am getting started with quail. When incubating eggs, which day is lockdown? Day 15. We actually have a video yeah. um, on incubating eggs. Let me try to find that. Give me a sec. Yeah, we have. Verna says, better put loofahs on a trellis or cattle panel hoop. We do plan on doing that. PJ says, and we were actually... And we're actually ripe when we were waiting for them to ripen, LOL. Yeah, that's funny. That happens. Josh says, I've heard the white strawberries are less likely to become snacks for the local birds. That makes sense, since they like to peck at red things. That does make sense. Linda says, we are waiting to make sure everything is Oh, set up properly. I'm testing out my incubators, brooders, growl pens, etc. with chickens and ducks. The kinds, kinks. the kinks should be worked out by then. Makes sense. And then Kristen shared the link for our incubating video. PJ said, nope, they like them just as well. White or red. All right. Yikes. <laughs> They were just so good. Linda says, already had a snake break into my grow up pens. That's fixed now. Oh, no. That sucks. It does suck. Nothing, like, will get you down more than a predator killing off all your animals. It sucks. Juanita Field says, trying to find some eggs. Nobody seems to have any. People have we eggs. Do. We have lots of eggs. We have but, eggs coming out of our ears. But well, a lot of people are ordering them and we're shipping them yeah, out. There, we, there is a little bit of a wait on getting eggs. I think pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. But they, if you're if you're able to, and willing to wait a little bit, yes, you should be able to find some. Woman of Spirit says, "I thought I bought a peach tree a month ago. It had blooms already. I put it." In my greenhouse, I used a small makeup brush and hand pollinated the blooms. I now have 34 tiny peaches. That's, That's awesome. awesome. We bought a pineapple bush tree, tree thing. Thing, yeah. It looks like a bush. Yeah, I was learning all about pineapple trees or bush, whatever you want to call it today. Yeah. But you basically get one pineapple from a pineapple thing. And that's it. But then you can plant the... Um, pineapple slips and the pineapple shoots and they grow really fast and get, you can get more pineapples um, quicker. Otherwise, if you grow the pineapple top, it takes two years basically for it to flower and produce a pineapple. Oh, wow. So that plant's like a year old. 
that's kind of what I was afraid of. Or a couple of years is old. Is that it was like kind of sort of like a one and done thing, not like mm -hmm. a lemon tree. We act not accidentally. We saw it at Jong's the other day, and I was like, "Ooh!" I'm like, "But is it a one and done thing?" And he's like, "I don't know. I'm just gonna buy it." I'm like. Okay, I'm like, I don't know anything about growing pineapples. He's like, me neither. I'm going to learn, though. I'm like, okay. Which is kind of how we bought our lemon tree. And then the cats killed it. We got one lemon. But now we got another lemon tree and a lime tree. And now apparently we have a pineapple tree and an olive tree. They're all in the house because Wisconsin. But, yeah. It'll be fun. It'll be interesting. Patricia says, thanks, Verna, and yes, about the loofah, they need to hang down to grow straight. Yes. Ed also shared our incubating quail eggs video. Oh, thank you. Linda says, it does suck even worse when you've hatched them yourself. Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. That really sucks. I'm sorry. I have no idea how to say this. Gatsy. Gatsky? Gats Key yes, Farms, key. AWTF, we went into lockdown today. Incubating is addictive. It is. Awesome. Verna says, just buy <laughs> pineapple, pineapple at the store and plant the tops. Yep. There you go. Yep. Pine Haven Acre says to get the biggest and best yielding strawberries, pick the flowers off for the first two to three years. That way the plant can focus on en energy and establishing the plant itself, then go all in for fruit. Yep, makes sense. Basically the same thing with peppers. When peppers um, um, start growing, you always nip the buds for the first month or so. Jasmine says, yes, incubating hatching quail is super addictive, LOL. Frank says, 160 eggs go out tomorrow to fill an order. Awesome. Josh says, it's super addictive. I have 13 chicks in my brooder and 20 celadons in the incubator. Cool. And then I shared, oh. No. Ugh. Kristen Earth. shared um, our. Because you guys are talking about like, eggs being addicting. I actually have a shirt. Um, it says hatch. It's a picture of a quail egg and it says, warning, hatching content is likely to cause addiction. Use at own risk and with extreme caution. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's why I like made that um, because I always said, I'm like, it's really addicting. Like there should be a warning label on them. So it's just a cute little, but anyways. Jasmine says, sweet potatoes. Anyone know how long it takes to harden them off, if at all? The slips, that is. Verna says, two weeks. Say, I have no idea. We can't grow sweet potatoes here. We have too short of a growing season. I don't really care for sweet potatoes anyways, so. I know I'm, like, weird. Everybody's like, I love them so much. I, I don't care for them. Donna's here, says, hello, just got one of your live notices. Well, thanks for well, joining thanks us. Thanks for joining. Jasmine says, oof, that would explain their stress. Verna says, the slips are ready to plant as soon as the real leaves show up. Oh, like true leaves? The true leaves, yeah. That makes sense. I mean, as a general, well, a lot of starts, that's usually the best time to plant them is once they get their true leaves right. Because usually they have their root system like more usually well before established. That, or I mean, a while after that. A little while after that. Okay. Good to know. I'm learning a lot about gardening this year. That's why I probably shouldn't have like gone as heavy duty as I did this year. But I have lots of really, really good books. Um, I just got one from Roots and Refuge I'm super excited about. Um, and then Jasmine recommended a couple. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on them. So We have 32 likes. We need eight more for my goal. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, Jasmine says, I'm growing them for the vines, fodder, and for the tubers, long-term storage. Nice. Speaking of fodder, we will have a fodder update video finally. So I know poor Steve, I'm sorry. I have not tried to string you along <laughs> intentionally. It has been a process um, getting that video made. So thank you for your patience, but that'll be going up here soon. Dear? Yep. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Oh. I was reading. You were speaking, says, was well, I take them off the potato when the true leaves show up, but then put them in the water for two weeks to get their roots good, strong. Uh, Woman of Spirit says, I have eight half barrels in my greenhouse. I will be planting sweet potatoes in those. They will love the greenhouse heat. Oh, that's a good idea. Now that there we have go. a greenhouse, I didn't even think of that. I didn't either. Hmm. Maybe Verna we just could said that too. more stuff now. Kristen, you can plant sweet potatoes in your <laughs> greenhouse. There you go. Yeah, now there's stuff like now. I mean, that's kind of why we got it was to like extend our growing season and a little grow bit. other things. Yeah. And maybe take my... Take things outside that are in the house. <laughs> my options are a little more... A little more now. <laughs> Jasmine says, Verna, my slips look like um, house plants inside. LOL. I had six mason jars full of roots, um, root kind slips. And Verna says, that is great, Jasmine. That's it. That's it. We're at the bottom. Yep. All right. We'll give it a second in case anybody has a last minute question or something. Jasmine said root bound. Well, unless anybody has another question or concern or something. What is it? Oh, I see. Okay. Root bound slips is what she meant. Got it. Mm -hmm. Verna says, do you have any rabbits expecting? Yeah, our crumb d'argent. Croissant hmm. is nesting like a fiend. We actually, yeah. Brandon posted a I posted a, a, short... a short video um, of her um, hay stashing. She decided to hay stash like, I don't know. Day a, 24. Yeah, a week early. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, it was like four days ago. Because today was actually supposed to be her nest box day. But, um... I decided to give her her nest box early. I made sure she's not using it for a bathroom or anything, but she is like ready to be a mama. Like she like is hay stashing and no fur pulling yet. Um, but like, it's really fun watching her and she's, this will be her first litter. So I'm hoping that that means she's going to be a good mama. But, and then we have two more um, does that will get their nest boxes on May Oh, little 8th. mama. Yeah, Little Mama, which is a creme d'argent. Um, yeah, and then Eclipse, oh. who is a black. You have to build a nest box, huh? Two of them, because Eclipse is also, I don't know if she took, though, because those fall-offs were not very convincing. There were three of them, but they were kind of like, eh. They weren't like, mm. they weren't good fall-offs. Um, so I'm not super confident in Eclipse's pregnancy. So, and she would also be a first-time mom, so we'll see. But, Yeah. Um, that's the one we got from like Marshfield or whatever. Yeah, I wasn't Marshfield. It was that near. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In that really windy town, like like it was like very blustery. Donna says another good book is Melissa Norris, the Family Garden Plan and Handmade, cool. along roots to refuge. Let me, I'm going to take a picture of that so I can look it up. Edgar Bates says, have you tried grow bags before? We have not, but... We are going to. We got some grow bags, and yes. we're going to try to grow some potatoes in the grow bag, thanks to Ed. Yes. Linda says, quail question, what do you use celadons for? Pretty blue eggs. Yep, that's pretty much all they're for. Um, they... 
okay, I have a love hate relationship with celadons. Um, cause I really like, like with chickens, I really like having different egg colors. Like I like olive eggers and the Easter eggers and all that along with the brown. I just like the brown like, eggs. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> when I found quail eggs, I'm like, Oh my gosh, these are so cool. Like the speckles and the patterning. And then I found celadons. I'm like, Oh my gosh, there's a quail that lays blue eggs. That's super cool. So I'm like, I have to have them. But then I started learning about the genetics of them and they're, I don't want to say that it's complicated. They're just kind of like time consuming and they're definitely not, they're, they just lay pretty eggs. They're not really great for um, like self-sufficiency or anything. Like you have to be very, 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 very picky when culling and stuff. So they're a bit of a headache, but I'm kind of stubborn. So we have them and it's a good challenge to keep me on my toes, but <laughs> They are definitely, um, sorry. Yeah. They like pretty eggs. That's yeah. They're kind of like a, I almost killed the camera. You know, you can have like a good handy purse, right? Like <laughs> an everyday use purse, but then you have like your nice purse. That's like, you only use once in a while. That's kind of like what a celadon is. <laughs> Jasmine says, Kristen, you could grow ginger in the greenhouse. <gasps> Ooh. And I don't Ed know how to grow ginger. Says, I know you just got some. Got some what? Grow bags. Oh, yes. Jasmine said yes to Melissa K. Norris. I'll have to check her out. Verna says, yep. Ginger and garlic in the greenhouse. We don't, um, luckily we don't have to grow garlic in the greenhouse. It actually does really well here, the hard neck garlic. But I think we got some soft neck garlic. I didn't look at what variety we got. Oh, because we didn't plant it in the fall like we were supposed to. So I think we, I'm guessing we probably bought soft neck because of. That's in the fridge too. Do. It's I probably too late. Going in the ground. I don't know though. If it's, if it's been in the fridge, it might be okay. We'll probably try it just because we're stubborn, but. <sighs> Sorry. Josh says, Linda, celadons are just a mutation that causes them to lay blue eggs. If they have two copies of the gene. Otherwise, they lay the same as other Keturus quail. Yes. And Ed says they're for eggs and meat. Yep, so you, you can use them for eggs or meat. The only reason I said they're not really great for self-sufficiency is because if you're, um, usually with quail, inbreeding is not a huge concern. With celadons and some other mutations of Keturus quail, like such as like SSC or just other other mutations um because the gene pool is so small the inbreeding you can't do for very many generations unless you're really picky and call very heavily um because they start to have issues sooner than say like a jumbo wild or jumbo pharaoh jumbo brown whatever you want to call it because there's so many of them like it's a larger gene pool so inbreeding isn't an issue celadons because people are like because like Josh said, you have to have a celadon and a celadon together to make sure that they keep laying the blue eggs. And that's all people, some people breed them for. Um, it can create a lot of issues. So you also have to breed, you have to keep that in mind, but also breed for the health of the bird, um, which for us, we do first and foremost. But then we have to like keep that in mind of celadon to celadon as well. Linda says, I wasn't sure if they were used the same way. I never knew there was such a large commu <laughs> quail community. It's been 10 years since I've raised them, and back then, anything other than regular quail were just for looks. Jasmine says, next weekend, we are heading to Baker Creek's <sighs> annual spring planting festival. They didn't have it for two years due to COVID, COVID, I guess. Anyway, I can't wait. I'm so jealous. That sounds like... That sounds like me being horrible like times. a kid in a candy store. That sounds really dangerous. I want to go. <laughs> Ed says, Linda, eggs and meat. Only difference between them are any other <laughs> quail, they poop out blue eggs. Truth. Truth. Verna said she had problems with laying regular as other bird size. Uh, Linda says the celadon eggs are pretty. I have Easter eggers just for the different eggs. Mm -hmm. And 
Ed says, earthquake, Brandon. Yeah, I'm sorry. I hit the oh. <laughs> my, my foot caught the cord. <laughs> yeah, we have olive acres, um, and we have some leg bars, which lay blue eggs. The olive, I used to have an F1 olive acre because they're sexable at hatch. Um, but then I decided to kind of take a chance on the F2 olive acres because they're their color is a little bit darker green. And I was lucky I got two and I ended up with two females because <laughs> they're not feather sexable then for the second generation, but I got really lucky. So anywho, I, I definitely like having a colorful egg basket. Makes me happy. Josh says, my celadons are laying a egg a day. Yeah, ours do too. They seem to be a little more picky. It seems when it comes to like the cold weather here, um, like to me, they're not really like compared to like a jumbo wild, like the eggs aren't as big, the birds aren't as big, but that's like comparing apples to oranges. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking. I was, but I stopped, I'm sorry. Gary says, night all, enjoy the tonight. We gotta get brooder ready. Donna says, how can you keep the quail eggs on the counter until you have to go in an incubator? We use these a lot of times. I don't know if yeah, you can see that. Um, we sell these on our website. Oh, did you do that already? I don't know. There you go. Oh, you posted Celadon. Yeah, I'm gonna-, I'm gonna I posted the link for the trays. Um, oh, you did? Yeah, we we have 15 count and 30 count stacking trays that we sell. But Kristen posted in the link for Celadons. Verna says, next to go are my Graufies. I'm keeping the Pansy Fees, Jumbo Pharaohs, and Jumbo White Wings. I love Pansy Fees. I only have a breeder set like for myself, just for my own happiness but I really like them. I remember when I was originally looking at pearls versus pansy fees, I was having a really hard time deciding. And I don't even know, I think the pearls, our pearls at least are a little bit more like symmetrical and like patterned, like like symmetrically patterned, I guess you could say. Whereas the pansy fees seemed a little bit more haphazard. And I haven't played with them a whole lot because I've been so like worried about the quail business, quail. Um, that I haven't had a chance to play with them to see, I guess I could try it, see if I could get them to do that. Since I was able to do that with the pearls, um, I was able to kind of selectively breed them to get the patterning that I really like. So I'm sure you could with pansy fees too, but they're both really pretty and they're both feather sexable. Anything is possible. Anything is possible with quail. Go team. Down set. Okay. Thank you. Linda is asking Verna, how many of each do you have? <laughs> she said, too many to count. <laughs> yes. Friends don't count. Friends, quails, chickens, birds, animals. Yes. Any who's. I need five more likes. So close. Verna says she gets 48 eggs a day. No, that's crazy. That's a lot of quail. Well, that's just hens. So that means that, because I, yeah, I know, yeah, she has boys because she says that they like ask her, are you all right? Because <laughs> when they crow, like sometimes you can pretend like they say things. Linda says, see, I like that number. Yes. Yeah, we, um, I think I started with 30 eggs. I mean, I don't think they all hatched, but I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I, think I we bought 50. And then I just kept buying more. I think you bought 50 eggs. And more. Originally. I don't know. I, I could probably go back in my email and try to figure it out. And I don't know what happened. And then we had, like, we at one point did have um, Rosetta's, Tibetan's, Gralfies. But I got rid of those because we decided to um, focus on like the feather sex bulls. And I really, really, really like having feather sex bull quail because for one, I don't like vent sexing. And for two, I think it's awesome that you can tell their gender at 
like before they're actually sexually mature. So. Verna says, Kristen, it isn't pretend if outsiders ask you if you heard what they said, LOL. What? So other people are saying the same thing or hearing the same thing she's. Oh, hearing. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Bears Farm or Bar. I'm uh, sorry. Hello from Tennessee. Hello. Thank you for joining. Bars Farms. Bars. <laughs> I know, I'm horrible with names. You know me. Look at that. We have 40 likes. Yay! Hit my goal. Ding, 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 ding. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I shouldn't say you can pretend like um, that they, you can pretend that they say things because people do say, a lot of people hear Cobra Kai. Um, so I hear all kinds of stuff. I hear. I know our son says, um, <laughs> um, I'm a quail. Yep. Um, sometimes they sound like they're saying what the farm. farm. <laughs> uh yeah. I'm trying to think. Are you all right? I'm a quail. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. It's very interesting, though. Yeah, they, they say things. Verna says she sees 41 likes. Woohoo! Cobra Kai. Oh, the YouTube thing says 40. But if you see 41, that's awesome. Yay! It might just I'll be behind it. or something, yeah. Kelly says, Xander says, hi. Hello. Hello. Okay, now I think we're at the end. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we will be back next week at 7 p.m. Central. Again, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and hit the notification bell so you get all of our updates on our videos that we're coming up with. So we've been doing a lot around here, um, making videos and such for you guys making content. So, um, but we'll see you back at one next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central here on YouTube and then at dual streams over on Facebook as well. But thank you so much for everybody for tuning in and we hope you have a good night. Bye.